I was a year out of college. My agent who at the time was Velvet Amber called and said, you know, that they're looking for someone to play a high school student on ISIS. Have you ever seen ISIS? I said, yes. And so she said, well, Joanna Peng, the girl who's playing the high school student now, is leaving and they want, an, they want someone else. So they saw your picture, you want to go audition? And I said, sure. So I went in and I auditioned and I saw, uh, Marilyn Laughlin was the first person I saw. She was the casting director at the time. And uh, she called me back and I met, I think it was the second time I, that I met Lou and uh, Norm Prescott and, and I think Arthur Nadell was in that that interview as well and um, so I read for them and and uh, eventually got the part I, I was kind of shocked because it was my first time ever on screen I was so green and fresh out of, of college and I thought oh my gosh <laughs> it was fun I had a great time all of our episodes um, were filmed during the summer so it was very, very warm all, all the time. We, I remember one location was up in Rocket Dine, and that day it was like 110 degrees. And I thought, oh my gosh, and I was tanning constantly during the day. It was hysterical because they started with one color of makeup at the beginning of the day. By the end of the day or the middle of the day, they were two shades darker because I tanned so much. But a lot of it was on location. We were in Chinatown. We were at Bush Gardens in one episode. I don't remember which episode that was. I'm trying to think. I think it was Now You See It. No, you don't. But um, we were at Bush Gardens. We were we were in a lot of different places. Not so much at the high school, but also the classroom. If I can remember right, there were, the classroom was on a set. We weren't not actually at a high school for the classroom setting. The classroom was set up at a, a filmation. Had another studio other than what was on Lindley. There was something down here in the valley and we would be on that particular set for the interior classroom. The character of Rennie Carroll it was pretty much, it was really close to me. I was a very, very exuberant, bubbly type of a personality. So a lot of the things that um, I incorporated into Rain and Carol was, was really, it was me. It was very much me. It was very much me. And 15 wasn't that long ago by the time I was playing this particular part. So I could definitely remember what it was like to play 15. And uh, that's what I used. What it was like to be 15 years old. <laughs> I don't remember having the, as much to do with Joanna. There was, Joanna was very quiet off camera. Um, her off camera work was even quiet, but she was a very quiet person. She was, um, we would work together on camera and then all of a sudden she would kind of disappear and go into her dressing room. So uh, I, I talked most of the time to, to Brian Cutler and, and also to the crew. The crew was, Fabulous. They were great. And I had a lot of fun with them. I, I had a lot of fun with the extras who were on any given show. Um, but Joanna, Joanna was very nice. She was very giving off camera and off camera work. She was, she was good. She was good to work with. Brian Cutler was funny. Brian Cutler a lot of times would make me laugh. And, uh, but, and he also was very, very generous, very giving. Um, with his off-camera work. He was very pleasant to work with, and I haven't seen him in a long time, and I would love to say, hi, Brian, thank you so much for all the help you gave me on ISIS, because it was my first show. The producers I definitely worked the most with was Lou Scheimer, Arthur Nadell, um, Hollingsworth Morris. Earl Bellamy as the director was wonderful. He knew that I was just a green little girl. My first day on the set, I threw up all day. Is it okay to say that? I threw up all day and he was so kind to me. And I'll never forget him just saying, you okay? And I was going, yes, I'm okay. He said, I know. It's okay. We will get through this. Let's get you out there. And I would, I would just smile. And then, and then after the take, I was so nervous. It, it, it was it was really that first day was so nerve wracking for me, and Earl Bellamy made me feel so comfortable. 
although I did throw up. <laughs> Lou Scheimer, as a producer, Lou Scheimer, I, I guess Lou is the person that I, I feel was most responsible for where, where my life ended up. Lou gave a little girl a chance to show what she could do. Um, and, and it was during a time when you had to hire someone who was in the union. So hiring me, he took a big chance, I think, in hiring me, because you have to tell the union why you hired this girl and not someone who was already in the union. And he had to write a little something out to send to, to the Screen Actors Guild. And, and he did that for me. Lou was terrific. Arden Haydell was funny, and I was always laughing. These were like, they were like my dads to me, for some reason. They, they both, they all, all of them came off that way for me. So they made me feel comfortable. They made me feel at home. Um, and I have to tell you one story about Earl Bellamy. I'll never forget. I was. Um, I forgot, I think it was, I forgot which, which episode it was, but I remember being in a park and we were sitting in the grass and, and they were doing a close up on me and the girl who was in the, the shot with me was doing her lines off camera and I sat and I didn't have any lines, just reactions and when, when Earl Bellamy said cut, he came over to me and he sat next to me in the grass and he said, you know Ronaldo, one of the most important things about acting is being able to listen. He said, and you listened. That close-up was perfect. And I said, oh, thank you. Oh. He was great. A few of the guest stars that I, I remember working with, Colleen Camp in the Cheerleader episode, in, and Lorette, was it Lorette Spang? Who was, the, she played one of the cheerleaders as well. and. Those two girls, oh my goodness, were they nice. I thought they were going to be, when I saw them, when I first got to the set, they were so quiet and I thought, oh Lord, is we gonna have a good day? And uh, actually we had a great day. But there was another person, Evan Kim, who was in Now You See It, Now You Don't. And actually we dated for about a year after ISIS. <laughs> There were so many funny things that happened on the set, but the, the, one of the things I remember the most, and there should be some footage, outtakes, of, of me eating my watermelon. I am a watermelon girl from the South. They found out Ronaldo loves watermelon, and I gotta tell you, there was watermelon everywhere. And there I would be, just eating my watermelon, and I was loving it. Oh, it was great. <laughs> The public reaction, naturally, as I, you know, as uh, each episode aired, I found myself being recognized everywhere I went. As a matter of fact, people would go, oh, "You're on ISIS," and it was adults, it was children, um, parents. My parents were teachers, and so it got around their school. Mr. and Mrs. Douglas's daughter is on ISIS, and then they had little brothers and sisters. I remember being in a store one day, and a little boy came up to me, and I signed an autograph for him. And as he was running away, he said, don't hitchhike, which was one of our episodes. And I said, yes, we are getting to the kids. They are learning something. I had a great time. The fans were great. And yes, I did get, a, I got fan mail. And I enjoyed that. I enjoyed signing uh, autographs. I enjoyed answering the mail for the, for the teenagers. Oh, and, and some of them were teenagers, which surprised me because I thought maybe it would be younger kids who would be attracted. But a lot of them were teenagers. So the messages were getting out there to people of all ages. I have an 18-year-old nephew who, who lives with me. Um, and he has seen the show in reruns, but I don't know if the, if, if the reruns are on uh, now. But uh, they saw, he saw the show, his older sisters saw the show, my nieces, my cousins, uh, and, uh, and my, my parents' students, they all saw the show. I would go to my mom and dad's school to, every now and then to just visit my mother, um, and, and the kids would always, hi, 
Denise. Hi, Minnie. Carol. Hi. Hi. And I would go, hi. So my mom and dad became celebrities as well as, as uh, their daughter just for being my parents. Like that, that was good. I think they loved that. But a lot of people saw the show. It, it, uh, it, it was amazing to me. There were so many people who saw that show. Meryl O'Loughlin, as I said, I think earlier, that Meryl was the uh, casting director who uh, cast me in ISIS. And um, Meryl was also doing other shows, and, and she would call me in for different things. And she actually was instrumental in instrument uh, introducing me to other casting directors. And that helped me to be hired in other shows like Good Times, The Jeffersons, uh, Carter Country. Um, what else did I do? What's Happening? What's Happening Now came later. Um, I did all of those shows as a result of having uh, gotten the start on Secrets of Isis. And, um, and even in Secrets of Isis, there was one episode where I sang, and I actually started off as a singer. Uh, and I, I sing today, and uh, I sing at uh, the Cathedral of Our Lady of the Angels downtown. So I work with the Cardinal. Um, I have worked with him often. And also once a month I go to East Lake Detention Center and I sing um, a mass, a service for the teenagers. And I, I think I get I think I get the most out of that. The the kids applaud after everything I sing. Every song I sing during the mass. They applaud. They're so hungry and I think I love doing that more than, than anything else that I do right now. But I sing a lot. I sing weddings, I sing funerals, I sing everything. You name it, I sing it. I was a little girl born in the swamps of Louisiana. Well, not really the swamps, but I was born in Opelousas, Louisiana. And, and I never dreamed that in my life I would do some of the things that I've done. And Filmation was very, very instrumental in opening doors for me. And I, they were wonderful. They were really wonderful. I went on to do so much television after The Secrets of Isis. And I enjoyed working um, immensely in Hollywood. Um, and, and I think they hired, they hired across all sorts of color lines, because Albert Reed uh, was the principal. He was a, a black man, another black person. Joanna Pang, obviously she was Oriental, and too we did we did episodes that were like um, we did an episode where we were shooting in in uh, Chinatown, and. We had an episode where the, one of the guest stars was Evan Kim, who was from Korea. Um, we had a lot of different um, ethnic backgrounds. Lou Scheimer was really good at making sure that the shows we did represented all of the ethnicity that you will find in, in any area you live in. And nothing was just all white, nothing was all black, nothing was all anything. We were all there. We, everything, everyone was represented. Everyone was represented. And the stories, the stories were such that whatever race you were, you could identify. You could always identify with anything that was happening on ISIS because all of the, all of the races were represented. Everyone was there. I am so thrilled that The Secrets of Isis is going to find a new audience. The stories that were told are for all times, for all generations, and I, I'm excited. I'm, I'm, I am really, I'm very excited. I never dreamed that this would come back so many years later, and for it to, to find its way back into to the world, into life, is is into a new generation. My nieces have children, and those little ones are going to get to see all of uh, see Auntie Nana. That's what they call me, Auntie Nana, and for uh, that's going to be exciting for them. And 
And like I said, we everything that we had to say on ISIS, every generation could benefit from. And so for another generation of children to be able to to learn all of the things that uh, that we addressed on ISIS, I think is great. For the secrets of ISIS to have found its way back into society, into the world for this next generation, I think is apropos, I think it's now, I think it fits, I think it's great, I think it's just, it's terrific. ISIS, other than being the first Saturday morning super heroine on television, I think it will go down as being a show that had real people. It wasn't a cartoon, but it was real people other than ISIS, but we were dealing with real issues that teenagers go through, kids go through. There were, it was all real, and I think that um, with the morals at the end, we will go down for that, for being able to, 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 to reach the kids to the point where they really listened. I think we stopped a lot of hitchhiking, you know? I will, I will go back to the hitchhiking, uh, the episode of the hitchhiking, simply because there were so many people who said that to me. We're not going to hitchhike. And I would go, wow, that is great. And I think we really did reach the kids. We taught them something. We taught them about safety at all times for themselves. And I think, I think, I think we were really, really one of the first shows that really, really did that with the kids. I am very proud to have been a part of ISIS. I am very proud of the work we did. I am very proud of, of the fact that we reached the kids. They got it. They got the messages. They got the morals of every story. Um, and I am very proud to be a part of the history of Filmation. Filmation was a great company, is a great company. The things that they did makes me very, very happy that I had the opportunity in life to be a part of that. I hope all of you who are watching ISIS now, if this is a new show for you, if it's an old show for you, I hope you love it and enjoy it as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you. And thank you, Lou. Thank you, Norm. Thank you, Arthur Nadell. Thank you, everyone. It was great for me. Thank you. Oh, my queen, said the royal sorcerer to Hatshepsut, with this amulet, you and your descendants are endowed by the goddess Isis with the powers of the animals and the elements. You will soar as the falcon soars, run with the speed of gazelles, and command the elements of sky and earth. 3,000 years later, a young science teacher dug up this lost treasure and found she was heir to the secrets of Isis. And so, unknown to even her closest friends, Rick Mason and Rennie Carroll, she became a dual person. Andrea Thomas, teacher. Oh, mighty Isis. And Isis, dedicated foe of evil, defender of the weak, champion of truth and justice. <laughs>